I don't even want to call it mushroom brown. Like, can we just call it taupe or something? Or how about truffle brown? Because truffle sounds <laughs> yeah. nicer than a mushroom. I don't get it. Okay, I mean, tru truffle, truffle is a mushroom, but it's like a fancy mushroom. Fungus brown. Can we? <laughs> oh no, not fungus. No, no, not fungus. Not fungus now. Hello, hello to all the hair besties in the land. I'm so excited. We're back with Heather and artistic team member, Nora. Hi. She's a little bit brassy. Do a full spin for us. Beautiful. We're gonna give her some <laughs> shadow ash today. A mushroom, brown, blonde type of situation. Are you nervous? I love mushrooms, they're tasty, so. Do you like mushrooms too? I do. I mean, let's take it from brass to sass, I say. Brass to sass, let's take go. Take me there. All right, body condom on. All right, no, you love mushrooms, Heather, but I pick out the mushrooms on my pizza. <laughs> I love the color. I don't even know how it got started. I don't know how some of these trends become a thing like peanut butter hair. All right, so we have established her natural hair is like a level two. She has a little transition five into a seven. So today we're gonna use shadow ash to mute her hair, it probably has the most ash power I've ever experienced ever. When I work with my chemist on developing the Shell Ash collection, I want it to be the most powerful ash that control every single orange red tones that appear when we're lifting dark hair like myself. I remember when we were talking about hair color, you said, what do you think is missing that we need? And there's so many ashes out there, but none of them are true ashes. And I think for me, like I have a lot of Middle Eastern, Asian, Hispanic clientele, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's really what's missing, I think, is something like that. So the reason why I want to use my Stardust technique is because when I go in with a zigzag and back comb it, I'm able to leave a veil of dark falling over so she doesn't look overly highlighted, overly blonde, because we want to take away from her. We just want to enhance her and contour her with the highlights. All right, so take a look here. I divide all of her hair in four quadrants. When she turned here, you see the first, the second, the third, and then the fourth. We leave the two back ones out, and I start at the top, and I want to do deep zigzags. Balayage usually lift the hair up to seven levels. We want to lift her hair as blonde as possible so we could erase all of the underlying pigment. Go parallel to that section. So this, we're going to clip, and we just flip it over. And usually we do about three or four of this, depending on how much hair. Underneath, I leave the nape area out because you don't want to over-highlight the hair. This little bit of shadow underneath will create like almost like a contour. A contour. Mm -hmm. This creates the illusion of more length and kind of take your eyes away from the breakage that's on top, if they have any. So now we've got four. So that tells me we're gonna do the same thing on this opposite side and we work one section as we go. You see this top veil here? We actually keep this out. We actually don't highlight this. So remember, as the veil drops over, you can see all the natural brown that will fall over the highlights. And let's mix big nine. All right, so we're gonna use Big Nine. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze out 100 grams of Big Nine. There's so many that I've played with that are so grainy, and I think when it's grainy like that, you're not gonna get consistent results. The cool thing about using Big Nine is that not only is it a cream base and it's powerful, but yet it's gentle at the same time, so you can use it on scalp without scalp irritation. Mm -hmm. But when you use it off scalp, you could take hair that are, that's really dark, like level one, two, or three, and really lift the hair to like platinum white. All right, so I'm gonna drop the first clip. Clip it out the way, and you can see the zigzag from underneath and on top. And what I'm gonna do is over direct the hair all the way up 180, and you want to back comb downwards. Drop the hair down 45, hold only the ends, and push that hair all the way up. You can see how it's a fine panel, so that way we could penetrate all the way through. Now, Nora made sure she paint underneath the foil of Big Nine, so there's penetration on both ends. That's right, from front to back. Yes, so now there's adherence. We're gonna scoop the product from the side, hold the hair out. Remember, dunking is for donuts, not for your tint brush. Donut sounds good. <laughs> so you can see with the one to two consistency, you can easily spread the product. And you can see here, this shows the underlying pigment. Different areas, I think some parts she's a, like at a four, some parts she's at a five. So we get to erase all of the gold pigments in there. So when we put the colors on, it'll be a lot more smokier. We repeat the same thing, lift the hair up, back home just one time. And always make sure you create like a V or W shape. If you end up getting like a ropey effect down the center, you hold my hand underneath and slightly do a comb. Okay, so now we're done following Heather's hair. We're moving on to basing. Now this could be a bit of a struggle going through all the back comb, but I'm gonna show you guys how I do it and we're gonna make it easy. So we are using Shadow Ash 7. I've been waiting for this forever, guys. Yep. It's one of your favorites, I know it for really sure. It really is, I love it. So you're using 30 volume. I am, and we're doing one to one. 
So the next form that I'm gonna mix is Shadow Ash 6. I love this. This is one of the formulas I use on my own head. And this is gonna go on her rootage. To ensure that I don't get a hot root, I'm gonna mix in Dark Shadows. Dark Shadows is calibrated at a much lower ammonia level, so you're not gonna get that overly brightened base break. This helps prevent it while still controlling the warmth as it lifts. I even love adding Dark Shadows when I do reds, um, when I'm applying CRCs it CRCs mm -hmm. and stuff. Because it kind of like mutes it down a little so it's not so bright. Nobody wants a hot root. No, <laughs> hot roots are not cute. I'm gonna tear the tab off of the Dark Shadows so we won't get the formless mixed up. So now I'm gonna go in with the level six shadow ash with dark shadows. We're gonna place this on the rootage. I start at the top first because the top section hasn't been backcombed. But for the first time ever, I feel like we finally have an ash color that has so much pigment that you're able to control all the warmth as much as you can because of the potency, but you're also able to have longevity out of it. All right, so now I'm actually gonna spin her around. We're gonna talk about the backcomb situation. Take it easy, open her up through that middle section. But once you open this up, it helps you really isolate the section one quadrant at a time. So remember the zigzag, you follow that zigzag pattern, place it right in through there. Now we're gonna do one foil up and you can see that I need to tackle that routage there. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't I think what's really helpful about the technique of getting your perimeters in with the color is you're kind of creating a roadmap for yourself that you can follow. All right, so now that we apply the routage formula, we're gonna go in with shower ash seven. All right, and this is the one with 30 volume. We need that extra oxygen to really accelerate the lift. And then I'm just gonna lay a foil down just so we don't get the product everywhere and keep the section clean. Apply and pack Shadow Ash 7 onto this mid shaft that's been back home. I'm actually gonna use my hands, my thumbs, and massage it in. So I'm just gonna drop the fringe section first so we don't have to deal with it. So I'm gonna do the top section first, which is the veil. I can see her base, it looks so pretty. Nora, what do you think it's about it? It's gorgeous. I can't wait to see it when it's done. In between the foils, just make sure you always open the foils up so that way you can make sure you don't miss any spots. The key is to get a lot of product on the brush and pack it on. That way you can penetrate all the way through that back comb and just push that product in. Heather, so tell me a little bit, because last time we talked, Two years ago, you told me that you wanted to pursue acting and modeling, but what are you doing? I'm still on that pharmacy route, okay. so I, I'm a pharmacist. <laughs> Is that what you want to do, or? I want to do a lot of things, and I think going into pharmacy was kind of hard at first, but I got there, I'm done, and now I've been working as a pharmacist, but I still feel a little bit like unfulfilled. There are other things I want to do, I still want to accomplish. It's hard to do both, and a lot of people are like, you're either one or the other. They always want you to just do one thing. You guys know I'm, I'm venturing into doing music, and I'm writing music, and, and it's something I'm passionate about, but then like so many people always, oh, stick to your day job, just do hair, and just, mm -hmm. you know, do what you do best, don't do anything else. It's like, I don't understand why. why? It's not fair, I mean, I just think if you enjoy it, it's something you're passionate about, it makes you happy, it doesn't matter if other people don't get it, it's not for them to get, it's your like outlet. Like, yes, you do like pharmacy and do all these things, but then it's also something your parents wanted you to do. You know, my background being um, Vietnamese, um, I felt like a lot of people get into that you know, the health field or like science. A, like a stereotype. Yeah, yeah, something safe. I think that we're more than, than yeah. what people want us to see. It's like, what do people think of us? They think, mm -hmm. oh, Asian, you do Kung Fu. Asian, mm -hmm. you do pharmacy, just stick to that. And that's fine, there's a place for that. Yeah. But I think that's where we get typecasted and we're not allowed to be ourselves. And that's why there's lack of representation in the media because we're not definitely. putting ourselves out there. Being Middle Eastern and being Muslim, I've definitely had that, especially in this day and age, the way my group of people is stereotyped as like a terrorist, for example, and we've had that experience when we've traveled together. Oh my God, I didn't realize you you'd gone through that until I actually went on a plane with you and I saw it with my own eyes. I go, oh my gosh, it is real. It's our reality. Mm -hmm. That's why That's why I think that it's so good to be sensitive to other people. Like a lot of people who've never been through that struggle, they don't realize growing up since I was a kid doing like Chinese, Japanese, dirty knees, look at these. They did all the, did they do that to you too when you were a kid? Yeah, well I had a crush on this one guy and he said, he said I'm too oriented. I'm like... I'm so used to being hurt growing up in Oklahoma. I've always been hurt. People made fun of me, so I just kind of just take it. Yeah, I don't want to be that. So, and you shouldn't. And break that's why, that stereotype. Honestly, that's why I'm inspired by you, Nora. I'm inspired by you to have a voice. That we should be afraid to be ourselves. And the same thing with you. You could audition for so many roles, and you could, you could live your dream that your parents never knew that, yeah. that you can be successful in, you know? Oh. To being victors and not victims. Ooh, I like yes. that. Cheers. Cheers. 
I am so excited. Look at her base color. It's hard to see on camera because her hair is wet. And remember, ash colors always appear darker to the eye because anything that's blue is muted and it sits in the back and anything that's yellow or gold or orange pops out. And remember that stardust technique? So you can see that dark veil that falls over and look how it blends all the way down and diffuse the highlights. And then as it comes up to her face frame, you can see that the color of highlight is stronger. You can see the highlights going higher to frame her face. This is beautiful. This is exactly what I wanted. We are going to tone her damp with our express toner, right Nora? Yep. We are going to do equal parts Misty Mauve and and Eclipse. By layering additional pigment on damp hair, you get to smoke it out furthermore. Mixing Eclipse and Misty Mauve together, you get like this taupey mushroom smoky color that you can't even describe. What I love about the consistency is that it's not just like liquid where it just bleeds everywhere, but you get to place the color where you want it, so you get to control the, your color melt. And the express toners are really great to use to pre-base the hair with something. For example, if you're trying to create like a rose gold, I love using the Blush yeah. Express toner. Um, sometimes we'll even add a little pink glow booster or love booster. Yeah. It will have something to anchor to and it'll last longer. Our Dimming Permanent Color, the reason why you can layer it so many times is because of the pH being acidic because it does not damage the hair. It's almost like you're conditioning and coloring it at the same time. Exactly. So our next formula is Misty Mauve and Misty Mauve only. Go ahead and squeeze it on out, Nora. This is gonna be one to two ratio with the dedicated six volume developer. But I love how it like fits in here so perfectly. Well, it's not just that too, it's the tab holder that I like the most. If anything, it's the tab holder. I'm not just applying it just on the ends. I'll apply it over the previous formula as well and swipe. Merge the two tones together. Don't be afraid. You can process her hair for five minutes if you want and be done with it. But for me, I like to leave it on just a little bit longer, sometimes 10 minutes, but you can leave it on for a full 25 minutes for full richness if you like to. I'm a little bit of a jellyfish. I love your hair. Like, I want it on my head. The color, Nora, seriously. I mean, this is truffle brown. We took her from brass to sass. I mean, seriously, her ends were only lifted to a level nine, and there was, like, gold left behind, and the misty moth control everything. And look at that base color. Shallow ash is no joke, you guys. I love it. You love it. I love it. This is what's in. This What's is it? trending. But as soon as my hair grow out, I'm gonna come after your wig. Like thumbs up, subscribe. I know you love the hair because I know I do. How do I look? Oh my God, it looks so good. This is my color now. All right guys, love you much. <laughs>